So we're back with another build video, and this one was a challenge from a clan member to make a burn DPS build, because I don't think it's ever really been done before. And this turned out to be really fun for trolling, and actually pretty useful when it comes to hallway fighting. Let's get into it. We're starting off with a survivalist specialization. We do this for the incendiary grenades because as we all know, they're really good for blocking up hallways and when you hit someone with them, it causes burnt damage and it stops them being able to strafe and aim and you get some additional damage on them with this build. We've also got the armor kits for our team. When you pop a kit, that's gonna pop a med kit for your entire team. In addition to this, we've also got 10% bonus damage for our group members for anyone who status affected and we also get 10% skill haste while in cover. All this is gonna come in handy for this build. Moving into the build, as mentioned, we've got Survivalist with those incendiary grenades, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Moving into our primary weapon, we're starting with the SIG MPX. This, in my opinion, is one of the best SMGs in the game. We've got damage to target out of cover rolled on this one, and of course, our talent can be none other than Ignited. Deal 20% weapon damage to burning enemies. After 4 kills, applies burning to the next enemy that you hit. With our mods, we've got Crit Chance, Plus 20 Rounds, Crit Chance, and Crit Chance. Moving on to our first gear piece, we've got the named Gilligard Chillout Mask. Now this is only available from the Loot Goblin during Christmas time. It comes with 5% total armor and armor core, we've rolled crit hit damage onto it, and we've used the two mod slots for skill haste. Moving on to our chest piece, of course we've got a soak off piece, for 10% SMG damage. It's rolled to all reds except for one status effect roll. We've also got the talent Spark. Damaging enemies with a skill increases total weapon damage by 15% for 15 seconds. That's going to come in handy in conjunction with using either our flame turret or our sticky bomb. Next we have the named Pekaro's holster rolled with skill haste and skill haste from the brand set. You can trade this in for the exotic Imperial Dynasty holster to get the skill tier, but you do lose armor and weapon damage. Our next pieces are the Fox's brand knee pads and the contractor's gloves rolled with crit damage and armor with the multiplicatives. We've been over those a few times, so we don't need to get into that. For our last piece, we've got a Walker and Harris backpack rolled with all reds and skill haste. For our talent on the backpack, We've got Companion. While you're within 5 meters of an ally or skill, total weapon damage is increased by 15%. This is going to be activated when you're with a group of people or if you deploy your incinerator turret. For our secondary gun, we've gone with the exotic Lady Death. Now, even though it is the secondary, I do end up using this as my primary gun because of the talent Breathe Free. When moving, gain 4 stacks per second or 8 stacks if sprinting up to 32 stacks. Each round fired consumes a stack, amplifying damage by 75%. That's an amazing damage amplification, and it works out to be a lot more than just using the SIG with Ignited. So I tend to use the SIG as my secondary. Getting into the skills which really bring the build together, we're starting off with the Incinerator Turret. Now this thing is going to activate both Spike and Companion when it's laid down, and it starts firing. but the key to this is, you can stop and start it at any time you want as long as it's deployed, meaning you can hide the incinerator turret, and when an unsuspecting player pushes on you, you can activate it lighting the whole hallway up, with hilarious effects. The last skill is the burn sticky bomb, which as we know, can be aimed to fire or blind fired when someone pushes on you. You can even lay it down and have an area effect so that when someone comes in, you can trigger it and burn them. Moving on the stats of this build, and they're not too bad. For our PvP damage, we got 37k with 52 chance and 117 crit damage. So that's pretty decent for this build. Now we are sitting at a true 1-6 on our armor as well, so we do have some pretty good survivability here. On the range, without anything proc'd, we're hitting 411k to the head, and we're hitting at 311k to the body with the SIG. For the Lady Death, we're hitting at 249 to the body and 328 to the head. Now I'm going to go ahead and lay out the incinerator turret. So now we're proccing spike from the chest piece, ignited from the SIG, and companion from the backpack. As you can see, we're hitting 404k to the body and a nice 642k to the head. Now with the Lady Death, proccing the Breathe Free talent with that, we're also hitting 568 to the body and a whopping 747k to the head. That's amazing damage. Playing this build in the dark zone, especially as a brand new player, can be quite difficult as you really need to be able to predict player movements and patterns. But when you do get it right, 
it works out a treat. Using the incinerator turret, I'm able to block off the entire street, which means anyone who pushes is immediately going to catch fire, and not only myself, but remembering my teammates, can also get additional damage from that burn. Because of the visible cone on the incinerator turret, I can set up the exact area I wanted to cover, and then throw my flame grenades to cover the other area. This guy has no place to go other than into the fire. PvP players are really predictable in the game. I knew this guy was going to back rogue me the moment I cleared Manhunt, so I've already laid down my incinerator turret. When he comes through trying to follow me, I activate the turret, and now he's on fire and he's shitting himself. Unfortunately, stupid me, I forgot to turn off the incinerator turret and caught myself on fire. He's on a regen build so he's got his armor back, but he's forgotten already that the turret's there. He tries to follow me through the hallway again and catches fire again, causing him to retreat. As you've already seen, the incinerator turret's really good for laying down traps. Because it doesn't activate straight away, people commonly don't realize it's there. So I set up my turret, we flag, and we pull back off the hallway to make them think that we're going to retreat. That encourages these guys to push, and when they do, they're in for a surprise. The other team comes sneaking up the hallway, and surprise surprise, you're now all on fire. They go running back to the checkpoint before you can say rogue agent detected. To show how much people don't actually pay attention to the turret being there, I lay it down, waiting for them to come around the corner, right on top of where they've been sitting. Now, my teammate can kit up while I flame the whole hallway and nobody can push. This build is difficult, but it's also really fun, and it's something different that you don't really see in the Dark Zone. If you give it a try, leave a comment and let us know what you think. And remember, like and subscribe.